Messiah foretold by the prophets. We give you praise, O Son of David and Son of Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We gather to celebrate sacred mysteries and we gather knowing the frailty of our heart and our lives. We have sinned. We have sinned before God and each other. Let us ask for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever First reading, a 
reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn, and to give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I excuse one. I reward them faithfully and make them ever, uh, make them an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations. Their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests, to serve his God and Father. To him, then, be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It is he 
who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and he who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. On that day in Nazareth, it must have been quite a scene. 
Jesus, the homeboy that everybody knows, coming into the synagogue and there sitting as anyone else would, but acting as leader, rabbi, in the synagogue, being presented with the scrolls, he takes the scrolls, and he deliberately rolls it to this passage of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. A year of favor, sight to the blind, set the captive free. In our, our text, Jesus is reading from the reading we had in our first reading from Isaiah 61. But in our text, Jesus is taking the Old Testament reading and realizing the type by fulfilling it. The Old Testament often prophesies what the New Testament fully realizes. So Isaiah prophesies that one will stand and say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. And it goes on, and you shall be priests of the Lord. For your robes of mourning, I will give you a garland of gladness. Reversing the ancient stain of sin and sadness which the hu humanity comes before God with and reverse it in, into joy, into gladness, into the praise of God. And this priest and this priesthood would turn the tides of humanity and move humanity from the drudgery and the futility that it experienced as it tried to find and search out their God. And this turning over of the tide of humanity, gladness and joy and, and given to, to this, this priesthood, the Old Testament prophecy is fully realized in the New Testament reality. So as Isaiah prophesied an anointing of the Spirit on this one, a priesthood who would reverse the ancient currents of sadness, lamentation, and despair, and a priesthood who would bring joy and gladness and hope for the people. As Isaiah prophesied that, when Jesus finished reading the scroll, he sat down and he said, this text is being fulfilled in your hearing. Say that with me. This text is being fulfilled in your, in your hearing. And the text that was being fulfilled is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the setting of the captives free, the blind receiving sight, the prisoner freedom, freedom to those who are captive, and a year of favor for the Lord. That's the text that is being fulfilled. But also the priest who reverses the ancient rites and reverses the ancient futility of humanity, that text too is being fulfilled. That text too is being fulfilled. Because in that text, in that text, we have everything that we are celebrating tonight. But you, you will be named priest of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I will reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, their descendants throughout the peoples, and all who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. They are a race who the Lord has blessed. To comfort all those who mourn and give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robes, oil of gladness, and for despondency, praise. 
the Old Testament prophecy is always fully realized in the New Testament reality. Isaiah prophesied this text. Jesus says, this text is being fulfilled even as you listen. And so even as you listen, the oil, the despondency people are receiving a garland of praise and, and, and for lack of hope they're receiving joy and gladness. Even as you listen, God is raising up a priesthood that will undo the ancient curse, a priesthood that will set a new motion in place, a priesthood who would allow through the anointing of God's Holy Spirit something brand new in the world, something brand new in the world. As we read that text, this text comes after Jesus was baptized. So it's the first text of his, his ministry. And we know that when he went down in the water and came up, the spirit hovered like a, a dove over him and said, this is my son. This is the beloved. My favor rests on him. So Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit in the waters of baptism. And now he's saying, as he reads the text, it has already been fulfilled. He has already been anointed. Christ is the anointed one. The Christ is the anointed one. It has already been fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, we in our time live as if, you know, we're still waiting on something to happen. Everything, everything that we need has already been given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Everything that we need for salvation, everything that we need for our families to flourish, everything that we need for personal holiness and the holiness of the community, everything that we need for the people of God to be a holy people has already been given. Everything has been given. And yet we live in our time as if we are somehow deficient or somehow waiting or somehow not having everything that we need. I want you to pause for a moment. I want you to pause for a moment and reflect on Jesus' words in the gospel reading. This text is being fulfilled even as you listen. In our second reading from the book of Revelations, it says, He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And He raised up a priesthood for this work. The text is already fulfilled. The text is already fulfilled. And that's what we celebrate today in the Chrysomas. God uses very strange instruments for the renewal of the world. Really strange instruments. He uses bread and wine at the altar. He uses oil for the people in our sacramental system. He uses human beings, frail and weak as we are as priests, for the sanctification of his people, to govern, to sanctify, and to teach his people. Really strange instruments he uses. But through these strange instruments, God is establishing his kingdom. Through these strange instruments, God is doing already what he intends. Remember, he is a alpha, and he is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. And all time and all seasons belong to him. And he has already accomplished what Isaiah prophesied. Already accomplished what Isaiah prophesied. Last week, Tuesday, 
on the Feast of St. Joseph. We had a wonderful celebration here. Anybody was here for that celebration? Raise your hand if you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Excellent. Great. We had a wonderful celebration. A deacon came into the church and a priest left. Correct? And something happened in that celebration that really speaks to the heart of what we celebrate today. Using the holy chrism that was consecrated last year and the ancient rite of the church, the laying on of the hands and the prayer of consecration. A man was transformed from a deacon to a priest. And in that transformation, he found ancient graces that he didn't have before, bestowed upon him. Graces not for his own joy or merriment, graces that were given to him for the salvation and the sanctification of God's people. The oils that we will bless and consecrate today are the oils that the priests use throughout the year for the work that God has entrusted to our hands. In the oil of the sick, the sick are healed and brought into wholeness and communion with God. In the oil of healing, in the oil of the catechumen, those who are far from God become, become near and, are become, and become seekers of God. In the oil of chrism, we become children of God, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. And in the case of priesthood, we become priests of God. We become priests of God. These oils, the ancient rites, the prayer of the church does something that is powerful and something that is necessary for the salvation of the world. And we come today again to bless these oils and consecrate chrism. We come today to renew our priestly promises. We come today to recognize that in priesthood, God has given a gift to the church that we sometimes do not understand. When Moses was directed by God to call forth Aaron as a priest and anoint him, the scripture says, as oil runs down the beard of Aaron, but when Aaron was anointed, it says he was anointed for sanctification to be made holy, to be set apart. Remember the Old Testament prophecy is fully realized in the New Testament reality. So if the oil that flowed on Aaron brought sanctification for Aaron, the oil that is used on the priest at their ordination not only brings sanctification for the priest, but for the whole people of God. Because through his sacred hands, the sacraments are dispensed, people are healed, the sinner is reconciled, the bread and wine turns into the body and blood of Christ, and, and God dwells in the midst of his people. God dwells in the midst of his people. In the Old Testament, we also have an anointing on David. And when Samuel took his horn and anointed David, the scripture says, and the Holy Spirit seized David from that day on. From that day on. The Old Testament prophecy is fully realized in the New Testament reality. If the Holy Spirit sees David from the moment of his anointing, in that imperfect anointing that Samuel gave to him, when the anointing of the church is given to the priest and, and he receives 
that anointing of holy chrism. Not only is he sanctified, but the Holy Spirit is poured out upon him. And then the prophecy that we hear from Isaiah is being fulfilled today, even as you listen, because the blind recite, receive sight and prisoners are set free. And those who are in dungeons are, are, are find liberation and the poor receive the good news of God. St. Francis of Assisi once went to a village and when he went to that village, he was told of a priest who lived there, who lived a very, very, very bad life. He was a scandal in every way possible. And Francis listened patiently as the villagers complained about their priest and how he was not living chastity and not living poverty, how he was dictatorial, how, how he was scandalizing the people. And when Francis later on met the priest, he knelt before him, he kissed his hands, and he said to the people, even the worst priest has been anointed in his hands by Jesus Christ. And even the worst priest is a persona Christi. us priests liberty to not strive to fully realize the ancient anointing for sanctification and for receiving the Holy Spirit it gives us no excuse whatsoever in fact it puts upon us priests a greater burden and a much greater much greater burden for those who have given much much is expected much is expected dear brothers we live in a really strange time where belief in god is being eclipsed by faith in technology by faith in science by faith in 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 humanity and faith in all kinds of other things we live in a time where even to have faith in God seems such a struggle for so many people. There was a time back there where, where faith was nearly natural and it was caught through the community. We live in a time, and it is this time that God called us to be priests. As difficult as it may seem, is as graced as it is. And God has given us everything we need for the sanctification of the people of God and for the transformation of the family and the transformation of our societies. He's given us everything we need. Because of the times in which we live, it's so easy to step back, so easy to flow with the flow so easy to allow the dominant currents of the day to lead and guide us wherever we are so easy just to be popular or just to be another figure god has entrusted into our hands a gift that is so precious and it is this gift that the world needs more than anything else the world in all of its craving is searching for God. It doesn't know it, but ultimately that's what the world is searching for. And the gift of priesthood that we have received offers to the world the encounter with Jesus Christ, offers to the world forgiveness and mercy. Pope Francis has called us to a synodal church, a church that is listening deeply to the heart, to the ache, the pain, the joy, and the sorrow of God's people. 
if we would dare to have the courage to follow the Holy Father, if we would dare to understand synodality, if we would dare to become a listening church, if we would dare to move where the Spirit is leading us in these days, we would see graces that we can't expect even now. And we would see favors that might surprise us even in our time. Each season and each time, God gives a grace. And the grace of synodality, of listening, of journeying together, of humility, of allowing God to work through his people, of recognizing that the gift of priesthood is a gift to be held co-responsible with the whole people of God. Not to lord it over, but to accompany, to journey with. This is not the time to shrink away. This is not the time to step back. This is not the time to dumb down priesthood or in some way to make it less than everything God intends it to be. It is for such a time as this that you and I have been called to the priesthood. And I say to you, as Paul said to Timothy, fan into a flame the gifts that were given to you when hands were laid upon you. The spirit that God has given is not a spirit of timidity, a spirit of fear. It is a boldness, it is a power, it is a love that God has given to us for the transformation of humanity itself. Let us today, as we renew our promises of priesthood, recognize the tremendous gift God has given, and let us be generous in giving this gift to all his people. Amen. now come to the renewal of priestly commitment. First of all, we will have a short silence as we each pray for our priests, for the Archbishop. In case you did, I, I, this volume is doing strange things. In case you didn't hear the first time, coming out to the renewal of the priestly commitment, we'll have a short silence first as each one of us prays in silence for our priests, for our Archbishop. Then the choir will sing. The, um, the words have not been printed in the, in the hymn sheet because the choir alone will, will sing the song for the priests. So let us pray. And as you pray, each heart a priest opens to receive and to give to the Lord. May the Spirit be poured out. Bye. 
Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God and in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Our response, Christ hear us, Christ graciously hear us. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ hear us, Christ graciously hear us. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest the good shepherd the teacher and the servant of all Christ, Christ hear us Christ, Christ graciously hear us may the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead us all, shepherd and flock, to eternal life. Amen. 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 Now we come to the blessing of the oils and the consecration of the chrism. So are those parish representatives from St. Peter's Carinage, Holy Family Mount Lambert, St. Martin Gonzalez, St. Patrick's Port of Spain, St. Michael Maracas Valley, and St. Paul Coover. Please go down to the back to bring up the oils for consecration and blessing. Gentle sunlight ripen, give this soil for Halloween. Humbly we present it to you, Savior of the world, O King. O Redeemer, hear your people. As they join in song to you. King of all eternal homeland, consecrate this living sign. May this all live 
shining song to you. Let the unction of the chrism make both men and women new. Heal their wounded nature's glory. Raise them to new life in you. O Redeemer, hear your people. Join in song to you. At the front, of the cleansing waters drive away all tint of sin. When the forehead is anointed, holy. Come flooding in. O oh, Redeemer, hear your people as they join in song to you. Of the Father's heart be As we bless the, the Archbishop prepares to bless the oil of the sick. This is blessed to be used in the Archdiocese during the coming year in the celebration of the Sacrament of Anointing. That the seriously ill may receive comfort, spiritual strength, and if it is God's will, healing. Let us stand. Let us pray. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son. Listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body so that by your holy blessing everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body soul and spirit may be freed from all pain all infirmity all sickness may your holy oil O lord be blessed by you for our sake in the name of jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
we present the oil of catechumens to be blessed. So the catechumens may be strengthened to renounce sin as they journey to baptism. It will also be used in the baptism of infants as they are prepared for baptism. Let us pray. O oh God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with gracious hearts and generosity the labors of the Christian life. And made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. We present the oil of prism to be consecrated, to be used as a sign of consecration in baptism, confirmation, ordination, and in the rite of dedication of churches and altars. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he blesses and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God our Father, author of all good and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that Christ joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit may serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacrament of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our face. And after the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. And in the days, all that has been clearly revealed, when every offense is removed, through the waters of baptism, the anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. 
you declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten son, and you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above all his companions. Therefore, we beseech thee, O Lord, to be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in all of its richness and pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. And from this holy name, it has received the name Chrism. And with it, you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you conform the chrism that you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May this formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal priestly and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament that you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit and may it make them partakers of earthly life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now move on to the collections. You may have your seats and those responsible for collection can proceed. And the persons for the presentation of gifts, please go to the table at the center of the church.
sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. just. It is truly. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit to graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night that he was betrayed he himself took bread giving thanks he said the blessing he broke the bread gave it to his disciples saying 
Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. 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 we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May, may he make a fact. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of, of God, her blessed spouse and Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Jason our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained as your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, O Lord. Look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Shalom, my friends. Shalom, my friends. Shalom, shalom. The peace of Christ I give you today. Shalom, shalom. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, no, no, no. 
Because of how you poured out yourself I have come to sing this song out in praise Imela Imela O Kaka Beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become pleasing fragrance of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated as we await instructions for the collection of the oil. now have the distribution of the oils. So those um, who will be coming forward, you'll be coming from that side. We're starting with the purple, white, and then green. And you'll be going around the altar. And you'll be reverencing the Archbishop and then coming down on this side. So the deacons will assist in distribution. So the names will be called out of the parishes and you'll be proceeding from that end and going around the altar and reverencing the bishop and then coming down. The non-parochial recipients, Archbishop's Chapel, Apostolic Nunciature, 
Abi Mount Saint Benedict. Emmanuel Community. Eternal Light Community. Fatima College. Holy Cross Priory. The Lospis. Living Water Community. Missionaries of Charity. Seminary of St. John Vianney and the Ugandan Martyrs. UE Chaplaincy. The Central Vicariate. Karapichaima. Shaguanas. Kuva. Grand Kuva Tabakit. Tortuga, the Eastern Vicariate, Arima, Aruka, Coreal, La Hoqueta, Malabar, Maloney, Manzanilla, Mayaro, San Rafael, Sangri Grandi, Toko Matlot. Traveling today, Northern Vicariate, Cathedral, Assumption, Belmont, Plachichez, Caronage, Crystal Stream, Diego Martin, Gonzalez, Lavantil, Maraval, Mova, Mukarapu. New Tong, Paramin, Pitta Valley, Rosary, St. Anne's, St. Fimbers, Woodbrook. Over to Tobago. Delaford. Scarborough. Returning to sub 
urban vicariate. Barataria, Boog Madletris, Curep, El Socorro, Maracas, Maracas Valley, Mount Lambert, San Juan, Santa Cruz, St. Augustine, St. Joseph, Tunapuna. The Southern Vicariate. Cedrus, Erin, Labre, La Romaine, Monripos, Maruga. New Grant, Pinal, Point A Pair, Point Fortin, Princess Town, Rio Claro, San Fernando, Separia, South Oropuch. A reminder that the, these oils are to be used this year, so all oils that are from 2012 and 2015 and 2023, etc., should be disposed of either by burning in the new fire at Easter Vigil or by pouring them into the earth. Okay, so no oils from previous years should be used in the sacraments or given to people for use in any way. A day like this doesn't happen by chance. It happens with a lot of people doing a lot of great work planning. So we can start by giving everyone who did anything to make today wonderful, let's give them a round of applause. In a special way, our choir, let's give them a special round of applause. There's a whole team from the Chancery led by Gail that 
does all the organizing for you. Please give them a round of applause. The MCs, Monsignor Mike, Father Crazy, Frankie, who pull everything together. Let's give them a round of applause. Our altar servers and the cathedral staff and hospitality. It's a joy that we have the non people nuncio with us. Welcome, Your Grace, and thank you for being here with us celebrating. And Archbishop Emeritus Robert Rivas, it's a joy that you're with us also. Many, many blessings. We have our seminarians and those from the Aspirant Sea House with us. Let's welcome them. And our religious, welcome them and lay consecrated. A very, very special thanks to our priests. Year in, year out, you do human service to the people of God. Sometimes unthanked and unnoticed. And I want to thank you today for going above and beyond the measure so often in your daily activity. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you allow Christ to continue to sanctify you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go forth glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Searching for the light 
like my children in their beds. They're suffering, they're crying.